The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Good evening and welcome to this Ash Wednesday service. We are glad you could be here to begin this season of Lent. The early Christian Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church that before the Easter celebration, there should be a 40-day season of spiritual preparation. During this season, converts to faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when persons who had committed serious sins and had separated themselves from the community of faith were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to participation in the life of the church. In this way, the whole congregation was reminded of the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ and the need we all have to renew our faith. We invite you in the name of the church to observe Holy Lent by self-examination and repentance by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, to make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now be in prayer before our Creator and Redeemer through our opening song, which will be on the screen. Please join me in the opening prayer. O oh God, maker of everything and judge of all that you have made. From the dust of the earth, you have formed us, and from the dust of death, you would raise us up. By the redemptive power of the cross, create in us clean hearts and put within us a new spirit. 
that we may repent of our sins and lead lives worthy of your calling. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servant. There's no way I have the money to pay you for that. That's like $400,000. That looks like I'm going to have to take all your properties and money and send you directly to jail for the rest of the game. No, please don't make me go to jail for the rest of the game and take all I have. Every time someone lands on my, on my space, I will pay you back. Well, since I'm feeling pretty nice today and since you're a cool dude and all, I could just let you go for standing on my property. Thank you so much. You're the best. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm awesome. Well, I'm going to get a snack and I'll be right back. Go ahead and play without me for a second. Are you kidding me? Of course I'd land on your property. Well, there's no way I can pay you $4,000. Well, then I guess I'll just take everything you do have then. Wait, what? No. Be patient with me, and I'll pay you back every time someone lands on my property. You don't have to take it at all or put me in jail. No way! There's no way I'm gonna um, wait 16 turns for you to land on my space for you to pay me back. I guess you're gonna stay in jail for the rest of the game. Jordan, you'll never believe what Sam did. After you forgave all Sam's debts, he took all Brighton's money and property for landing on his space. Yeah, and then he sent her to jail for the rest of the game. Are you for real right now? I canceled all of your debts and landing for the most expensive space, and you're going to make her pay you? Why don't you just forgive her like I did for you? That's... That's it. We're done. And I'm never playing Monopoly with you ever again. This is how my Heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. You know, as part of wedding counseling, if a couple says they've never had an argument and try to come off all lovey-dovey, I tell them, fine, you know what? Go home and before you come back, play a game of Monopoly. <laughs> Who's ever played a full game of Monopoly and not had something like this happen? Oh, my goodness. The story starts with Peter asking, how many times do I have to forgive? And don't you just know that someone out there is counting up to 77 on you somewhere, waiting for that 78th time so they can tell you, no, I'm not going to do it. And Jesus said I didn't have to. It's not really about counting up to 78. It's about the idea of forgiveness that is so much larger than what you would think. Not just 10 times 7, 11. It's spinal tap all over again. Turn it up to 11. Boy, no spinal tap people, huh? <laughs> 
Desmond Tutu said, there is no future without forgiveness. No future without forgiveness. South Africa came out of apartheid many years ago at this point. Some of us remember what it was like back before the idea of a huge rift of segregation, a minority holding the black majority into check. The atrocities that happened back and forth through years and years and years. 30, 40 years of violence. Gandhi got his start in apartheid Africa. When they finished that terrible practice. And Nelson Mandela was elected president. They did not start holding trials for all the atrocities. Instead, they held truth and reconciliation hearings. Who's followed the concept of truth and reconciliation hearings? A couple. What they did was they went and got the people involved in the atrocities. And then they got the victims, and they both sat down in a room. And as long as in the course of the conversation, both sides told the truth about what happened and how the incident unfolded, and then mediated the constant emotions that came up. Then no one was charged. There was opportunity for reconciliation and forgiveness. Over and over and over again, dealing with murders, Dealing with rapes, dealing with mass atrocities by the police and the armed services against whole communities and families. And in the process of telling the truth, sharing the stories, finding reconciliation and forgiveness, the country was made whole. And the people formed together to be a stronger community of peace. It's hard to think about how that looks. Christian faith is built on the idea of forgiveness. The whole of the Christian faith boils down to our need of forgiveness and God's great generosity to forgive. Strip away everything else about it. That is the heart of Christianity. Our sins are a multitude. Unrepayable to God our creator. And yet, and yet in an act of unconditional love and grace, God, in the form of Christ, lived, faced trial at our hands, received a sentence and penalty of death, shed his blood 
sacrificed his life. And then the promise is fulfilled in the resurrection on Easter morning. Matt, back up to that last slide of the song we sang. No guilt in life. No fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath. Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ, I stand. And what's the word that goes at the end of that? Forgiven. given we'll be studying the word at some length through our sermon series during Lent it's amazing when it's such a simple concept how complex we tend to make it but it starts with understanding our need for that redemptive power and making, whoops, making those words that were up there real in our hearts. Today is Ash Wednesday. Time when we turn our attention towards the passion of Christ. It's a time of reflection, of self-examination, of finding the places where we need to confess our sins and seek forgiveness. The place where we need to find reconciliation with brothers and sisters whom maybe we've wronged and seek it in a place to go and forgive those who have wronged us in the same way that Christ forgiven us. Today we mark the beginning of Lent and those days of reflection with those thoughts in mind. It is the cornerstone of our faith. On Christ I stand forgiven. Thus let me also forgive. Amen. When you entered this evening, you were each given a note card. We ask you to take a moment now and write on one side of the note card of your transgression, your sin, your burden. Write us something that has been weighing down on your heart so that together we may seek God's forgiveness to be made whole again. Please do so now.
Please join me in the responsive reading as found on the screen. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor requite us according to our iniquities. What shall I render to the Lord for all his bounty to me? Let us test and examine our ways and return to the Lord. God has blessed us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way, the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord. Yet, with a contrite heart and a humble spirit, may we be found acceptable in your sight.
It is God, through the sacrificial death of our Savior Jesus Christ, that our sins and transgressions might be cleansed. With a contrite and humble heart, we invite you now to fold your note card in half in effort to completely cover up your words of confession, providing each of us with a clean slate. Later, when you come forward to receive your ashes, we will invite you to come up the aisles and place your note cards in a basket. You will then proceed to receive the imposition of the ashes with a final act of acceptance and forgiveness. Let us pray a prayer of thanksgiving over the ashes. Lord God, you have made us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be for us a sign of our mortality and penitence, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we given everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. As you are able and ready, please come forward with your note cards and hand them to a youth to be placed in the basket, and then proceed to receive your ashes.
passing the peace of Christ dates back to the earliest church. An opportunity in the midst of worship to greet one another with the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ is with you. And the response is? Good. Stand and greet each other in the name of Christ. invite you all to join with us in the closing hymn.
my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you. May God, who has forgiven us now, make us strong for these days ahead. May Jesus lead us and we be found faithful to follow. May the Spirit purify our hearts for all to see and be blessed. And may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Go in peace to love and serve God and your neighbor. Amen.